so thankful that I can give all that I have, all that I am, to He who loves me more than anything in the world. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to trade all of my sorrows. The highest rev and the highest speech of what God has given to them as gifts. Because every gift is your treasure, and every treasure is what is marketable about your life that God deposited in you. You are the needed and not the needy. And it is the gift things in you that made you the needed. Because God packaged you, God configured you, God assembled. I am Reverend Matthew Shogoro, and you're welcome to your joy coming. Thank God. You are alive, I'm alive. It is the pleasure of God because there are things yet undone that God is trusting you to do. And that's why you're still alive and that's why I'm still alive. I pray for you today that by the authority of God, the grace of God be so much on your life to fully fulfill your divine purpose. Why God sent you and why God kept you. In the name of Jesus Christ, let us pray. Father, we thank you for this moment of time. We thank you for what you are set to do in our lives to your word. Send forth your word and let your word heal and deliver your people. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray. Amen. Today, we'll be talking about the tragedy of cockroaches in the church. The tragedy of cockroaches in the church. Now, in this time that we are in right now, is an end time of life. And God has actually shown us through Jesus Christ about the season's operations. I mean, the kind of weather of the day, the kind of occurrences that will be happening here and there. And you can see that the whole nations of the world are in distress. And God told us in Micah 4 from verse 1 that the whole world will come over to Zion because God will lift up Zion and put the mountain of God's house upon the mountains where it will be accessible for men. And the Bible also didn't make us to understand that we are the light of the world. We are to shine light in the darkness of the world. So, because light only has its place where there is darkness. Where there's no darkness, light is inconsequential. But now listen to me, beloved. The darkness of the world await your light. And God now said you are a city set on a hill that cannot be healed. That's why you are, you know, exposed to all manners of satanic attacks because the devil can see you. He doesn't need to look for you. He can see you because you are not hidden. But now listen to me. Just like challenges are opportunities for champions to prove themselves again and again. Understand that in this fight, you are going to win. For every battle has a mantle. And God has there to empower you with this mantle so much so that you can overcome every battle of life. So understand that as your champion, a champion that you are, every fight is like an opportunity for you to prove that you are a champion indeed. Today, looking at the scriptures in the book of Matthew, chapter 13, I want to read from verse number 47 to verse number 49. Matthew 13, 47 to 49. It says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. The kingdom of God is like a net that was cast into the sea. And when it got into the sea, it gathered every kind. Now, the church of God is the one used uh, you know, to symbolize a net that was thrown into the sea. The sea is the world of men. But now, in the world of men, there are different kind of people who have decided to pattern their life after different kind of things. Because as soon as men left the Garden of Eden, now there was opportunity for men to now decide who to follow. They now have got a power to, you know, make good use of the power of will and choice that God has given to man. Now, Bible now says, whosoever you submit yourself to, the servant of whom you belong. Now look at what is happening today. The devil now has made a lot of people to pattern their life after animals, after insects, after birds, and all manners of things that God has created. And that's why you see them, they put tattoo on their body of animals, of crabs, of spider, of all kinds of things, fishes and stuff. And now they begin to pattern their life after that. Now, 
Human beings who are made in the image of God no longer want to follow the pattern of God and begin to live like God and as God are they heard. Because in the book of Psalm 82 verse 1 to verse 6, the Bible says there, it said, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judged among the gods. Now, God said we are mighty and God said we are gods. In verse 6, he now said there, he said, I have said that ye are gods because all of you are the children of most are God springs of God. You came out of God because the day you were born, God came down. You came down as God by God and for God. Now, what does the Bible now say? It said, when the net was thrown into the sea, so that we can go get fishes. Because anytime a fisherman throw the net into the sea, he has an expectation to go get fishes. Not stones, not crabs, but get fishes. But unfortunately, when he throws the net, he must expect that his net will carry ominous or death in the water and then catch fishes, both big and small, and also go for other things that he never wanted. Just that is the problem of the church today. As God's net in the sea of the world, the church is now gathering all manners of stuff of people, different kind of people who are chosen who to pattern their life after. Some have patterned their life after cockroaches and i've been dealing with cockroaches because you know looking carefully at cockroaches in their kingdom in their in their sect you know there are a lot of things to learn from them and we can see the traces of this among people living in the church today the bible now said it will gather all manners of things verse 48 which when it was full they drew it to the shore and sat down and gathered the good into the vessels but cast the bad away so it shall be at the end of the war that the angel shall come forth and see the wicked from among the just and cast them into the furnace of fire and there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth now to everything that has the beginning there's an end the owner maker sustainer maintainer defender upholder of this earth says this earth as an end and so you must understand that there is nothing that is given to you or that you are in charge of today that is forever because it never started with you and it's not going to end with you god said the earth as an end whatever opportunity is given to you on earth make good use of it any office god has given to you make good use of it because whether you like it or not Life is a loan. You have a long-term loan. We have a short-term loan. The one who loaned you is going to have a back at his own discretion, at his own timing. There's an agenda and there's a calendar and God is following it. And the Bible now said, this net is thrown into the world and when it is thrown into the world, it began to gather all sorts. But at the end of its gathering, when everything comes to the time that he had decided that, okay, let me sort out the good from among the bad, then there's going to be a separation. But now before then, we need to check ourselves. We are informed so that we might not be destroyed for lack of knowledge. And that's why we're learning what we're learning today. That you might be able to learn, check yourself, evaluate your life, and consider ponder look at yourself carefully because say watch and pray not watch other people watch yourself watch on what you allow yourself to do okay check on your life and find out am i in the right place am i doing the right thing who am i am i fulfilling purpose am i actually doing what i'm sent to do now here we are talking about people who have decided to pattern their life after cockroaches and they are in the church they are in the net of god but they are not useful for god now let's begin to see the characteristics of cockroaches and thereby i'll be explaining how it applies to some who are in the church today who are so-called christians now in the world you have cockroaches all over the world because why they travel by accidental movement why People pack their luggages from their homes. And despite the fact that, like from my country, if you want to travel from my country to any country, now the next thing they will do is that they will say, the, the aviation has, I, I mean, the aviation uh, uh, company has instructed that they must fleet, you know, 
the aircraft. And what are they trying to do? They want to flit all your insects that followed you. They want to flit anything that is called bugs or whatever that followed you into the craft so that you don't move it from this country to that country. But as much as people are smart, it is so surprising that cockroaches are smarter. Because why? Cockroaches are in the bags and they are being chucked in in the baggage. So even while they flit people there, cockroaches are already in their bags. So when they get to the next country, Cockroaches continue to expand. That's why they are all over the world, just like spider. Now, the Bible now said this, that right in that net, there are different kinds. So one of the kind that we're talking about that God does not want it to be is a cockroach. Now, most church goers are cockroaches. And what are cockroaches? Cockroaches, in terms of their spiritual implication, are Christians who have no identity are Christians that move from one place to the other. They follow everywhere, everyone everywhere. Anywhere they say, oh, there's a program. Everywhere they say anything is going on, you see them walk into it. They don't care. They just go anywhere and go everywhere. Now, this are the life of cockroaches. In the book of Acts 19 from verse 13 to 15, the Bible says that when Peter was ministering, the Bible said God did undeniable special miracles by the hands of Peter. And because of that, certain people, certain Jews, certain extorses, certain people in the church now gather themselves together and say, we'll do what he has done. They don't know the story of this man. They don't know what commitment he has to God. They are not ready to give the kind of sacrifice he has given because for every rice, there's a price. But they are not waiting or they are not ready to pay the price. And then they want to do what he is doing, right? And the Bible says that there were a setting called seven sons of Scepha. Scepha was a priest. And then the seven sons came together and said, we also saw Paul Peter. And we're going to do what Peter had, had done. And the Bible said, they saw a man who was possessed with the devil. And they decided they were going to pray for the man. And they began to pray for the man. And they now told the man, they told the demon in the man, that in the name of Jesus, that Peter preached, that Paul preached, we command you, get out of him. And the demon answered, checking you spiritually, I found out that Paul we know, Jesus we know, Peter we know, we know all those people, but who are you? Because spiritually they have no identity. Why? They are not connected to the origin, so they are not an original. All right? So he now asked them the question, and the Bible said the result was that the demon in that man bamboozled them, came over them, wounded them, naked them, and then sent them out of the place. Instead of them now casting out the demon, the demon casted them out. That's what happened to some Christians today. They can cast out demon. Why? Because they are not connected to the source of the power which is given to us by God. And because he said in Luke 10 and 19, he said, you are given to you power to turn upon serpent and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy and and nothing shall be any, any, by any means hurt you. Now, that's Luke 10, 19. God has given us power. Not only power, power and authority. Okay? But the devil has only power. And we have power and authority. Now, and we supersede him. We can always subdue him. Bible says, you chase the devil, cast him out, resist him, he will flee from you. And that's what God expects every believer to do. But you can't do that if you're not sure of your origin, if you're not sure of your identity. So every cockroach Christian is a, a Christian without identity. They may be churchgoers, but they are not connected to the God of the church. They are not in touch with the Almighty. Number two, this group of insects are ancient groups. They be and they have not changed. They are just there. Just like the Bible says in Jeremiah 13 verse 33. It said, can an Ethiopian change his skin? He said, a leopard cannot change his spot. So also some people have made up their mind that they are accustomed to evil and they will not repent. So also this kind of Christians or churchgoers, you find them in the church, but they have made up their mind. They have chosen what to believe in the message. They have chosen what to listen to. When they are listening to what they feel does not satisfy their flesh or their loss, they look away. Some can even be in the church and they are sending SMSs to a boyfriend or to a girlfriend. Some can be in the church and they are pinging or thinking or whatever they are gaining. But now listen to me. Some also can even be there and they are writing letters or they are, you see them busy writing as if they are jotting down something, but they are not jotting down the message, but they are busy maybe drawing pictures right in the church. That's a Christian life that is called a cockroach Christian life. People who have made up their mind not to change. I 
And a cry for change, I'm telling you, is what necessitates a life of progress. Until you change, nothing progresses in your life. Because the passage of time is the evidence of change. And changes is progress. All right? We are progressive changes. Now, God wanted to change. Look at the life of the man called Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus got the change he got because he cried for change. He got the healing he got because he cried for it. Now, when you don't sow into changes, your life becomes stagnant. And hear me, when your life becomes stagnant, you become stinking. You become irrelevant. You become absolute because you will not be able to move as God is moving you in a moving world. Number three, cockroaches look downward. This set of Christians are not even minded. They are only earthly minded. Those who look around and get out, but those who look up, get up. Now, Bible says in Hebrew 12 verse 2, it said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Now, where you look is where you're going because you're looking in, is what actually channel your direction. Now, these people, they don't look at God. They don't look at Jesus. They don't even look at their scriptures. All they look at is down. They look at what the devil wants them to look at. They look at the world. They're so carried away by the situations and the pleasures of the earth. Now, number four, they run from the light because they are nocturnal insects. Why? They love darkness. They are works are works of darkness. Why? They eat, they devour, they destroy. They don't do good things. No, cockroaches don't do good things. Now, when you relate them to those who are in the church today, who are cockroach Christian, now you find out that they hate exposure to the word of God. Anytime you see them in church, they don't want to sit down in front. Even though they came early, they will sit at the back. Because why? They don't want the power, the anointing, and the exposure of the word of God, the revelation that can bring revolution to hit them in the face. They want to hide behind people's back. So that if, if anything is being said and does not go down well with them, they can misbehave, they can do anything, they can even walk out. Now because why? They are workers of darkness and they love darkness. All right? Now this kind of Christians, they don't like messages that will challenge their, their conscience. Why? Because they don't want to repent. They have made up their mind that they want to walk for the devil. All right? When they watch TV and you are preaching a message about thou shalt not commit sin, because listen to me, every commandment of God has not changed. Christ said, I have not come to abolish the law, but I have come to fulfill it. God still says, thou shalt not steal. He says, thou shalt not commit adultery. He says that thou must not bow down your head to any graven image. Everything that God said in the commandment is not a comment, it's a command. And God has not changed it. God's commandments are not adjustable. But what has Christ come to do? He has come to teach us how we can live the law in a better way. Because the law says, as soon as you trespass, you must be stoned to death. Judgment follows immediately. But grace says, there's opportunity for you. First John chapter 2 verse 1. He said, this I write unto you, little children, that thou sin not. Don't commit sin. He now said, and if any man sin, that means it is possible for you to sin. And then you should not be thrown stone at. You should not be killed. You should not be buried for sinning. He said, all you need to do is that you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus, the Son of God. So cry to him. What grace brought to us, the difference between grace and the law is that the law condemns you immediately and sends you to your grave. But grace says there is still opportunity for you to plead that you are sorry, to repent and turn away from your wickedness and God will show you mercy. All right, that is what grace has brought. That's why we call grace unmerited favor. We don't merit it. We were supposed to be judged and sent to hell, but then he said, No, Bible said the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So now, when you accept Jesus through grace, now you can plead and repent. And Bible said, When you repent, when you confess your sins, repent and you are converted. He said, The time of refreshing will come from God. So, but this one have made up their mind that they are going to walk the walk of darkness. When they hear messages like that, they turn their heart away. They love preachers that can attack the government but leave sinners alone. Sinners in the church are still there. They don't attack them. Sinners who call themselves by the name of the Lord. Because the Bible said they, they are called let the name of the Lord should depart from iniquity. They don't mind them, but they now go attack the government. They say, yes, preach it, pastor. Go ahead and say it. And they love all manners of, you know, sugar-coated messages. 
Soft drink messages. Messages that will eventually give them spiritual diabetes. Because they love everything to be sweet. Oh, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. But Bible says, knowing the terribleness of God, we want men to desist from iniquity. God is good. That is sure. And his message endures forever. But in his message, he killed Korah, and Abira because they were walking against his word. All right? This ones they roam and travel from one place to the other. They are not stable in the church. Number five, cockroaches can run and they are very difficult to catch. All right? Why? Because they are very intelligent in that area. Now, these ones who are Christian cockroaches, they are very, very intelligent sinners. They carefully conceal their sins that you cannot even see it on them. They will be in the church. They will have two faces in two places. All right? They are deceivers and not believers, but I'm telling you, you can't fault them. You can't even find out because some of them, they know how to cover their sin. And the Bible says that if you cover your sin, it says you shall not prosper. It's the word of the Lord. What you cover is what is covering your glory. What is covering your purpose to be fulfilled. Number six, they hide in narrow spaces and holes. All right? Like I said, they are permanent backseaters in the church. Many of them are in the church. Five years, ten years, six years. They are never workers. They don't even join the working team. Because why? They keep hiding. When you say the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, they are gone home. All right? In fact, when the message is past the time they taught, they leave church. They have no respect for God, nor for the man of God. Number six. Number seven. They are attracted to uncleanliness and food crumbs. All cockroaches are attracted to uncleanliness and to food crumbs. The same thing happened to the activities of Christian cockroaches. They are attracted to unclean things. Oh, if you if you give them microphone to sing praise worship, they will sing it quite well. Now give them the same microphone and say, sing us Michael Jackson. Sing us all this worldly music. They will sing it just as good as those who sang it. Why? They are, that, they are so attracted to unclean things. Now when you say that we want to have three days of, you know, teachings, there will be, it's not a miracle service, but we want to teach, we want to have a retreat with God. Ah, they will give you excuses. But when you say yes, we are going to have brine, we're going to have dancing competition. We're going to have eating and drinking. We're going to have men meeting ladies. So that if you need to get married, and oh, they will be the first to attend. They will go and dress. They will go and buy new clothes. Because why? That's what they are attracted to. They always love things that will remind them of Babylon. And they want to bring Babylonian dance into the church. You can see them among praise worship people who are singing today. That they are bringing the world into the church. So that the church will accept the standard of the world. And that's not what God says. God said we should build a standard because we are the one from the creator who should be creative. Hallelujah. Now, they move close to bad people because they're always comfortable in bad companies. you see a believer who will leave church and then you'll see him on the street the next 15 minutes walking with a smoker, walking with a drunkard and that's his best friend or her best friend. Beloved, that shows who they truly are. That they are only pretending physically that oh they don't belong to that set. But if you are comfortable in the hands of the devil, that means the spirit of the devil is inside of you. Now, number eight, they are extremely difficult to eradicate because they are adding sinners in the church. You can't send them out of church. I'm telling you, they have their own way of making, making sure that they are they are so tied to people or tied to the system of the church that you cannot send them out totally out of the church. All right. The next thing is that they adapt themselves to a variety of environment. Take cockroach to any environment in the world. They adapt themselves. These Christians, they adapt themselves to any kind of messages. Any kind of message they hear is good for them. And they always follow. Because why? They have made up their mind that they will not change. Now, number 10, they are spoilers. Wherever they are, they spoil things. Because cockroaches don't make things beautiful. They spoil things. So, Christian cockroaches, they spoil fellowship. They scatter fellowship. They cause division. They are good gossipers. But take them out to go and do evangelism. They can't do it, but they can only do evangelism. Telling people about people, but they can't tell people about God. All right? And the last one I will say is that they create offensive orders. They can cause God to leave the church. Like in the days of you know, Joshua, 
when Achan took what God hated, and for Achan, God left his people. For Achan, thousands of people who are dying. All right, in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 8, from 1 to 6, Bible also they told us how they brought abominable images to the house of God to drive God from his church. So, this kind of people, they also bring abominable things to the house of God. They have all manners of air styles that are of brotherhood of darkness. They have all manners of dressing. You know, see, you see some ladies, they push out half of their breasts out, and they're coming to church. They wear very skimpy clothes, very tight fitting, and they begin to trouble men who are even in church to even serve God. Those who be calling bread of Jesus, they'll be fighting with their heart right there in the church. Why? They are spoilers. All right? They bring offensive order before the Lord. Are you, are you, are you, are you a, a cockroach Christian? By what you have just heard. And lastly, they, are, they spread disease. They spread disease. They don't bring things together, but they're scattered. They are very, very stubborn. And the Bible says in Proverbs 29 verse 1, He that is all full rebuke and repent not. Bible say it will perish suddenly without opportunity to repent again. Now, beloved, what does God want us to do? God wants us to repent because He is warning us for His love's sake. He doesn't want us to be destroyed. The end of time is very close, and you must not be a cockroach in the, in the church, but rather a believer, a child of God, a solid member, someone who is an ego Christian. That because of you, the church is progressing. You are an addition to a multiplication and not a division or a scatterer in the church. It's just guys was speaking in Luke 11, verse 22. It says, He that is with me, he that is not with me is against me, and he that does not gather with me is a scatterer. Are you a scatterer or a builder or a you know a construction instrument in the hands of God? You need to think about that as we pray. Can you close your eyes? Jesus. Day by day, we are closer to the end of time. And you are warning us to make us understand that our heart must not be lost here because even this world is not an eternal commodity. But our soul is an eternal commodity. That's why you said, if a man loses soul, with what shall he use to substitute it? Because nothing compares with the soul of a man in this world. Father, I ask that by your spirit, you will make my listeners to understand their eternal value and live like that and forsake all manners of satanic attractions and distractions and give their attention to God alone to live for God and by God, not as cockroaches in the temple, but as eagle Christian, as people working for God and working with God. Thank you, Father, as you bring this understanding to their heart and you cause them to live by it. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' powerful name, we pray. Amen. You know, I'm so thankful that I can give all that I have, all that I am, to He who loves me more than anything in the world. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to trade all of my sorrows. You know, I.S. Rev so and the I.S. speech of what God has given have, to them as gifts. Because every gift is your treasure, and every treasure is what is marketable about your life that God deposited in you. You are the needed and not the needy. And it is the good things in you that made you the needed. Because God packaged you, God configured you, God assembled you with what your world needed.